Hello, this is Brian Kinghorn, and I'm going to talk to you today about preparing your main data file for use in MateCell. And you may have to read the instructions to get greater detail, but this overview will probably help you get started. The minimum required files for running MateCell are the main data file and then some other parameter files. The main data file contains both your data and pedigree whereas the parameter files are matecell.ini, which has got a variety of parameters in it. But for grouping, where you're classifying animals into different groups, you need this file. And if you're not grouping, you still need a file called imp1group.txt. And I'll talk about these three other files in another video. The main data file is a text file. It's not a binary file. And the header line is read and the delimiter type is detected and you must use the same type of delimiter throughout the file and that's either spaces, commas or tabs. And of course with commas you can use a CSV file and view that in Excel. But if you have a file like that open in Excel and try to run it in MateCell, it will not be opened by MateCell. So a little tip is to make a copy of your main data file so that you can observe it in Excel if you would like to do that without disturbing the MateCell run. The minimum required fields are these six. Uh, the first three fields in the file must be in this order, the ID of the individual and the ID of its sire and its dam. The names of these fields are not important because MateCell doesn't use them. So you can use kid, dad and mum or father and mother, whatever. But you must start with these three fields in that order. Otherwise, order is not important in MateCell data files. These ID can be numeric or alphanumeric up to 20 characters. The other three required fields are sex, alternatively you can use gender with one M or M, two F or F for denoting the sex. And there is of course bisexuality, which we can talk about in another video for plant breeders. Max use is the maximum use of each individual in the pedigree. It's maximum use as a candidate and the use is a mating and more strictly speaking, a planned pregnancy if you're doing reproductive technologies. And in this field, you put the maximum number of matings you are willing to let each candidate have. There is an asterisk here I'll come to. And finally, index is your prediction of the genetic merit of each individual, and that's typically a multi-trait EBV or a genomic EBV, and typically in monetary terms. We come to the asterisk now. You can use max use in two different ways. One, as I've described before, is to actually enter the number of matings each individual is allowed. But that can be tedious if you want to go through the whole data file to make a change in that. So what we also have is the ability to use it as a switch zero to indicate the individual is not a candidate and one to indicate it is a candidate. And when mate cell detects that for a given sex, you've only got zeros and ones, it goes to another file to see what's the maximum use you are permitting for all members of that sex. If you want to have different members of a particular sex, for instance, bulls to have different maximum uses, maybe 25 or 30 for natural mating and 100 or 500 for artificial insemination, then you would have to put these numbers directly in the file. Otherwise, you can use it as a switch. Other recognized fields are min use and abs min use. The difference between these is that min use is allowed to involve zero use of an individual. But if its min use is 10, it must be used at least 10 times up to max use. Abs min use is absolute min use. The mating group of individuals, which we'll talk about later. These are the genotype and genotype probability fields, starting with G underscore, GP underscore. Location relates to the housing position of animals in a facility and is used to help streamline mating operations. And lethal A and lethal G are to control additive long-term and genotypic short-term effects of multiple lethal recessives. So let's now look at a simple example. Tiny test is a file that we use in some of our exercises, and it's the minimum requirement you've got there, which is ID, sire, dam, sex, max use, and index. And in this case, we've used letters to denote sex, and max use for males is not zero or one. Here we've got eight male being this male here, meaning that that male can be used for up to eight matings. And so we could have different numbers here because we're using the original definition of max use that the words defined in the file. There are other fields here and because none of them are 
reserved field names, they are taken as traits, and these are the EBVs for these different individuals. We can look now at mate cell classic demo. That's the file that comes with mate cell. And if we look in the max use column over here, and if I go down, you'll see that for males, I've included the max use of one as well. And for simplicity in, in this file, I've used 0, 1, which makes no difference numerically, of course, but it helps me if I want to come along and make a replacement of that 0, 1 with a different number, such as 25, to indicate that all those males have 25 uses, and then I could edit that to make some of them have more than 25 uses. We look at this file here, where I've used sequential numbers, it's actually the same data set, but I've taken out the characters. You can see males here, 25 uses, one for male, two for female, and the males are 25 uses. So in this case, mate cell would detect that the maximum use is actually indicated in the file, and so that's what would be used. If it were the classic demo with, with one being the maximum for mate use, it would go without grouping to this file, and it would read 25 from this location, and we'll describe this in more detail in other videos but that's where we would read the maximum number of uses. Just summarizing the reserved field names, which we've discussed already, are here. And that means that any other name that you give to a field is taken as a trait. I've got that in inverted commas. And that's because they may not actually be traits. It could be the date of birth of individuals. It could be the paddock number that they are sitting in at the moment, or it could be something to do with their breed. And what happens is that all these fields that are not reserved names are taken to be traits and are put under trait management here. And that means that you can manipulate those traits for various types of outcome that you might want. And there's a different video about that. But they could actually represent, for example, rather than the average genetic merit of the parents, because these are progeny distributions, which is the average genetic merit of the two parents. It could be the average of the ages of the parents or the average of the paddock number that they're in. And you can use this sort of approach to creatively manage certain aspects of what you do in your breeding program, either in this unusual way, but there are other ways of doing it. Sometimes it's good to, to have this facility available. Okay, we'll finish off by looking at some pedigree issues. Generally, you should aim to include all historic pedigree because it's best for accurate relationships, but you have to be aware of missing pedigree information because candidates with missing pedigree information look like new blood, and that's uh, not what you want. In such circumstances, there are various things you can do, but uh, you should consider using genomic information if you can, instead of pedigree for diversity management, and we'll discuss that in another video. For very large pedigrees containing over 60,000 individuals, it can be quite slow to develop the NRM within mate cell, so you could try pruning using pedigree viewer. Now, if you have a data file open, you can click this icon up here and over on my other screen appears the pedigree for, that you're working with. I'll actually look now at a different pedigree. Here it is. Uh, this one has about 80,000 individuals. And what I can do is go down to the tool prune pedigree and bring this over to the window. And if I click here and say that I want to prune all their ancestors back five generations, it's done it immediately. And what it's done is for each candidate, it's looked for a maximum of five generations of ancestors, uh, if that information is available. And doing that, is the number of, is pruned is 21,000, reducing the number in the pedigree to 60,000. And I can save that file and open it. And it's just coming. There you are. And that is probably more tractable to be using in mate cell because of the smaller number. If you have speed problems, you can look at doing that. Another reason to, to prune is, given in this example, what we're looking at here is just a pedigree. If we hit F1, you can see that uh, the pedigree links look like that. Pedigree viewer is something you have to play with to discover. This pedigree has been constructed by nominating the candidates and then going and getting a whole bunch of pedigree out of a database. And a lot of that pedigree is redundant, not required. In this case, if I go and prune the pedigree and I declare that uh, I'd like to go back 
as far as I can. I'll just put 999 generations back. When I do that in Prune, I still get rid of quite a few individuals. There are nearly 3,000 individuals being pruned out of the pedigree. If I save that file and let it load, there it is. You can see there are fewer generations involved. And what's happened there is that individuals in the pedigree that have got no contribution to current candidates are completely unused by MateCell, and therefore you've got a, a neater, smaller data set. And if you do an exercise, you can test that you should get identical results in MateCell between using your bigger and your pruned data set. Well, that brings us to the end of this video. You can look at the other videos to do with setting up your parameter files if you want to take the next step towards getting your MateCell run working. Thank you for listening.